Speaker of Parliament over the delayed implementation of Gravity Water Project that was funded by Government of Uganda and Partners eight years ago. Of course, the Minister of State for uh, Water was visiting and we went up the mountain. Still, she saw the, the dirt on the old one reservoir which can't even accommodate water like uh, which can feed everybody there and we you saw many people are not very pleased with what uh, was happening and they, pro they pushed forward a lot of complaints that that tank many times is empty and they sell air some some company which is collecting revenue there uh, was the one getting money from them, but mainly to buy gas because of pressure from the unempty tank which passes through the taps which they have been uh, opened. I looked at the matter. I was also not very happy like others because we expected after eight years of service, of w trying to do work to put m uh, gravity water from uh, the source of River Manaf on that mountain was not complete. We didn't know exactly what was the, the problem. But you, somebody answers today that, no, I'll find another 50 million for you to get tanks. That didn't please people at all because they wanted to know government money should not have gone like that where uh, if it's 23 billion. Because the project initially when they did the plan in Mbale, was three billion shillings, but it went slowly until it reached that 23 billion. Now, what has happened that you didn't put all those tanks and pipes down with 23 billion, and you are bringing only 50 billion to redo the work? This is all to increase the capacity of the the things. This is something which. That's why people didn't even clap. They didn't. They just kept quiet because um, it was something new to them. And they they said if people failed with that amount, how could they manage with this little amount? So we are moving forward. They are all. I left them all signing signatures, signing that we take this to parliament, the petition parliament, and perhaps a better investigation would be found why these things are moving like that, how they are not done, and we see how to proceed for people to enjoy what the government gave them. UBC Lunchtime News. Parliament Wednesday passed the National Social Security Fund Amendment Bill of 2021 to allow workers access their savings midway before official retirement age. This follows an outcry from workers that resulted from the COVID-19 pandemic, a situation that rendered people financially stagnant. The bill grants disabled workers 50% midterm access as they are ablaid, as they are able but Able-bodied counterparts are recommended for a 20% access after serving for 10 years. I voluntarily kept it there. I get it anytime I want. Who will supervise the National Social Security Fund? You in gender, if you want uh, expertise from finance, must you put it in the law? Is it Ministry of Finance? Then you amalgamate all the investment, compute the interest and declare the interest or gender, labor, and social development. Put finance, put finance, put finance, put finance. So for you, what are you going to supervise? These are some of the questions that surfaced as Parliament sat to debate the National Social Security Fund Amendment Bill of 2021. The discussions were meant to put right what was cited by the head of state as wanting in the previous amendment that he declined to assent to. The purpose was to help someone get out of a difficult situation. And therefore the fund must be mindful of that. And that is why we even considered the 60 days as opposed to 90 that the minister wanted to try and expedite this process. It's been here too long. After over two hours of deliberations, a decision was reached and the bill was passed 
having resurfaced on the floor on Tuesday afternoon. I beg to move that the bill entitled the National Social Security Fund Amendment Bill 2021 <laughs> be read the third time and do pass. Honorable members, the motion is that the bill entitled the National Social Security Amendment Bill 2021 be read for the third time and do pass. I put the question that motion does in favor to the contrary no. The eyes of it. Members of Parliament have welcomed this milestone that they describe as long awaited. The implication now is that even if you have one employee, you will be eligible to contribute to, for that employee and the employee will also be eligible. So the impact is heavy to all of us who have house girls, who have, as long as you pay that person a salary, you'll need to contribute 10% as an employer to the fund and that employee will also have to contribute 5%. But we know the president was uh, strongly opposed, the reason why this bill returned to parliament, and the president had requested parliament to review that decision. And today, parliament has reviewed that decision and accepted that the supervision can be shared, finance will handle financial matters, gender will handle policy principles regarding labor relationships. Persons with disabilities will be granted midterm access of up to 50% of their accrued benefits. Once they clock 40 years of age, their able-bodied counterparts, on the other hand, will receive 20% at 45 years of age after saving for not less than 10 years. The National Female Member of Parliament for Persons with Disabilities, Laura Kanusu has appreciated this milestone. And the justification was clear that as persons with disabilities, when we lose our jobs, we, it is almost impossible to get another job. But also our life expectancy is not the same as the able-bodied people. So while the other people have remained at 45 and the 55, which is the final one, for us persons with disabilities, we've been allowed to have our midterm access of 50% at 40 years and uh, also access the other, uh, the remaining 50% when we are 55. The bill now awaits presidential endorsement before taking effect. After 60 days, Henry Okrut, UBC. Minister, for, Minister of State for Energy and Mineral Development, Okasai Opelot, has commissioned 25 solar mini-grids in Lamo District, Northern Uganda. Unveiling the mini power plants, Minister Kasai underscored the importance of adopting renewable energy technologies in order to address the energy demand of millions of underserved people across the whole country. The 25 mini grids constructed in northern Uganda are powered by solar, a renewable, reliable, and eco friendly source of energy. For a remote area like Palago Sub County in Lamo District, northern Uganda, this initiative presents immense opportunities with potential for productive use of electricity. Most of our environment is actually being devastated because of charcoal and firewood. We are relying on biomass. We have got to turn that store around using the vast energy potential that we have. Cooking is the major part which takes our biomass. We want Uganda to move forward and the economy to pick up, and for that, electrification is a precondition. Solar panels for charging phones and running a TV are nice to have, but not nearly good enough. What we need is to produce energy that is sufficient for private businesses and that rely on a constant energy supply. Besides helping to mitigate climate change, the adoption of solar energy for businesses and home use can tackle rural to urban migration challenge. I'm pleased to announce that over the next five years, we will continue to support this sector as provision of sustainable energy is an essential prerequisite to achieve sustainable and inclusive growth and foster job creation. Both on-grid and off-grid technologies will be needed to provide electric energy to more than 20 
million Ugandans who currently have no access to it. The local community here is urged to utilize electricity to transform their livelihoods by establishing businesses and adding value to their agricultural produce. Let us strategically mobilize our commodities, valuable commodities, to be processed by this power. Let us mobilize the farmers to grow much more because if we continue at this level of subsistence, we are, not, we are going to miss it. This is the hardware, but the hardware, if you don't use it properly, is just the hardware. And um, if we come back maybe, Minister, in about two years, you and I, we would probably like to see something flourishing. Minister of Energy under the National Development Plan 3 has prioritized the development of mini power grids and within the next four years, at least 200 plants will be set up across the country. The 40 mini grids, 25 in Lamo district and 15 in Isinjiro and Rakai districts are funded by the European Union and the German government to a tune of 18 billion Ugandan shillings, Dennis Igor and Charlotte Amuge for UBC News. Parliament applauded the Uganda national netball team for their outstanding performance at the 2021 Africa Netball Championship where they emerged second best in the whole tournament. The outstanding performance increased Shukren's ratings where the team is number six now at the global level, number two in Africa and the best in East Africa. During a sitting to pay tribute to the netball team Shukren's, the legislators urged government to increase the budget. For netball. Looking towards getting the World Cup for the first time for this country. And also in this competition, other teams brought in their professional players who are playing out. But because of lack of resources, the she crane could not find money to bring back their professional players. So Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues, I think time is ripe enough that we have to identify young talents. We need to move throughout the country. Netball shouldn't be only a game of few people around. Imagine it gets 17 billion. We have 51 federations. FUFA alone gets 10 billion. 3.6 billion is used for administrative costs. And you remain with 3.4 billion per quarter, which is 120 million per year. And this money has never been received by the Federation. The money that they received was mobilized because they were going for a tournament. This is Prime Minister of Bunyoro Kitara Kingdom, Andrew Biakutaga, has rallied his subjects to support operation wealth creation programs. Biakutaga says this will ensure household incomes, uh, will ensure an increase in household incomes and better livelihood of that people. Bunyoro's premier, Andrew Biakutaga, wants to ensure families get incomes and are also food secure as per the kingdom's strategic plan of 30 years. Yakutaga, who also visited one of the model youth farmers in Chitema village, Chezige sub-county, Kagadi district, says the kingdom wants to promote a health population with steady incomes through implementation of affordable and profitable ventures. This is the program which is we are undertaking throughout all the 15 uh, parishes of uh, Unyorokitara kingdom. So today we have uh, um, confirmed them and inaugurated them and this is the program we are doing. Uh, ensuring that uh, we achieve our objective of uh, improving governance in the kingdom. Charles Chisembo, a youthful farmer, says it is possible for the youth to begin small and grow into big farmers who can earn from mixed farming. Projects that can really help the youth change their lives so fast 
uh, we look at your local chicken, we look at ducks, we look at turkeys, then uh, we do what we call the symbiotic relationship in farming, whereby we integrate all this with coffee, with cocoa, with bananas. So my husband, we started with, uh, uh, with ten, 10 hens, but within a year we had 500 100 birds. The Vice Chancellor of African Rural University, Mwalimo Mosheshe, who the Prime Minister also visited, says that Bunyoro is endowed with natural resources which the people must tap into using modern technology. We should tap into those benefits, especially in the area of technology, in the area of agriculture, in the area of wildlife. We have a lot of potential for tourism and we have young people who are the future of this country. Addressing sub-county and parish chiefs of Bunyoro Kingdom at Kagadi Community Hall, Yakutaga shared the kingdom's strategic plans. The Prime Minister also visited long-serving chiefs, Patrick Tibamwenda and Leo Sebalaba, who played a great role in the return of the lost counties of Buyaga and Gangais. <laughs> Today, MTN Kapo Day. It's super smart. Just so good, we're funny. Da, uru no jisa suram. Bola, bola. Ah ah, kugambi. Ye ne ye ya kavi. Atenga tamani ndala zona mukakare. Ejira ku mukogwa y internet. Ha ha. Wata. Kati chovu kula. Gwenyika stream mukaga tano. Step tano. Step bili hash. O kibere ubo super good, we're funny. Da, MTN Kapo Day. Uru malu kibere boti. Do kabo do sip. Do kari MTN. Everywhere you go, MTN. Yes, thank you so much for watching. Welcome back from that short break. Now, we have a live to come in a few minutes. But before we go, there is news about uh, the doctors that laid down their tools at the beginning of this week. We want to know, uh, sources say there are some agreements they have reached with government. How true is that? And all that is what we are going to have in this brief kind of chat with their president here, uh, Dr. Odongo Samuel Oledo, who is the president of the Uganda Medical Association. That's the umbrella body for all the doctors in Uganda. Doctor, you're most welcome. You're most welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. Now, you chose to lay down your tools as we started this week. First of all, this is not the first time. What is always the problem? Just briefly, that you people choose to lay down tools all the time. Briefly. Uh, it's not that. Thank you very much, viewers. I'm Dr. Dong Samuel Oledo, President of Uganda Medical Association. Yes. Uh, it's not true that we prayed in laying down tools. It's not like uh, an ongoing thing. No. Uh, laying down tools was uh, the last resort that we took on in 2017. Okay. And uh, this was associated with the working conditions and the welfare of doctors. And in that regard, there were different collective bargaining agreements which were set up. Mm -hmm. In 2017, the industrial action was suspended. It was suspended in 20. 18. Upon arrival on decisions that uh, doctors' welfare will be improved, drugs in the hospital will be improved, okay. and the budget of NMSs and NMS will be improved, and that was done. Mm. Uh, however, at that time, there was the last collective bargaining agreement reachment, which was not fulfilled. That was moving from three million shillings on the welfare of doctors to five million shillings. And also, sorry. yes, yeah. and as well as, as sorry. Then in turns, moving from 750,000 shillings to 2.5, half of the pay of the medical officers. So that went into a total speed until 20, 21, and on. But we also, we also looked at the fact that in the time of the pandemic, the beginning of COVID-19, 
it was quite hard for the nation at that time because uh, the resources, the coffers were put on hold. The finances, of course, went down. Everything was not moving. Everything normally. was not moving on normally. Okay. So we totally but, but understood at that ask, time hmm. uh, the implementation of the five million the welfare and also the increase. You know, there's a lot of money which was channeled into fighting COVID, uh -huh. and as doctors. Uh, looking at the COVID-19 being a pandemic at that time, and many people are dying at that time, though they're still dying, we channeled our energy to ensuring that we save lives, okay. much as we had a concern. So notice was given to government uh, before industrial action was carried on to, to re-divert the mind of government that, please, the promises made in 2017, can we, lo can we look into them? This as is where my concern now Yes. Where is the justification of the five million for you, the senior guys, and the two point five yes. for the interns? Actually, doctors are meant to get ten million shillings, the but because we know we know the economy. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at one, uh, this salary is looking at accommodation, mm -hmm. looking at the doctor's welfare to find himself at the place of work. You get it. He's looking at his ability to take his children to the same schools, at least or better, the schools he went through. You get it. To be able to go to the market and purchase as the other our colleagues who are in the same cadre, we take seven years to do medicine, by the way. That is six years and one year of internship. Which cost does that? So we take a lo longer time in training. And what we train for, it is to save lives. It is very sensitive mm. in a way that I would not want or would not want to be able, in the process of saving lives, we have to save ourselves. You get it. Okay. So the five million shillings was it's to cater for all. Of was that. to cater for that, and it was a presidential With directive. With the five get million, it. if we wake up and government provides that five million, shall we have you guys concentrated in the government hospitals? You don't part time in other private clinics, your own clinics. Again, you look for a doctor in the village, and he cannot be seen. He only comes on Tuesday. The rest of the time is in the town at his clinic or in his other personal businesses. Jordan, if, if you look at the issue of the doctor's deployment itself, do you realize that we have 1,634 doctors employed by government and we have a gap of 4,031 doctors? Do you look at that gap? Mm -hmm. So it means uh, the, the job which is meant to be done by four doctors is being covered by one doctor, logically. So you guys are so, government? So one of, the, one of the, the beautiful directives that the president brought up was Employer doctors. We have 1,113 doctors who are unemployed. Okay. We have another 500 I, I doctors. Want to look at because so, the, the, at the end of the day, they ask us to close. Okay. I want us to look at how far you have reached in terms of agreement with government. Let us wind up with that. Uh, we are happy that we are now towards, we, we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. And uh, our beautiful presidential directive uh, is being implemented. We are glad that time frame has been attached to the different pledges that the president made. And as doctors, we are seeing that uh, in a very short period of time, mm. we shall find ourselves back into service, full service. Okay. Because we pride in giving a service to Ugandans. Okay. So I want to encourage doctors that for sure, uh, clear timelines have been given, directives have been given by the Fountain of Honor yes. to different lay ministries mm. and time frame attaching accomplishment of this. Okay. So this is a good gesture. And as doctors, we are celebrating this, happy about this. But uh, are you going back for work? The Have process, the process of going back to work, going back to work is a process. What we assure Ugandans that since a good guest has been provided to us, we are encouraging Ugandans that we, as doctors of Uganda, we are going to get ourselves back into service. And we are, since government has given us guarantees now, which is beautiful, and we are going to. Look into this, build further relationship, and work with doctors to see that we give a better health care. Thank you doctors. so much, Dr. Oledo. Because of the live coverage that is coming in, we'll put it at this, leave it at this, but we'll get more time. We also need to ask you a lot as the public. The word is light at the end of the tunnel. Okay. So Thank there's light so at the end of the tunnel. My name is Michael Jedon Lukomo. We're taking you to uh, a live coverage here. You do not have to miss. Keep it with us. invite other delegates to join you before I deliver this speech. As she comes, 
Our hands should be clapping.